Well, it's quite obviously because we're, we're one ummah, we're one family. As a, as a hadith relates that if one part of us suffers, the rest of us responds with, fe uh, with fever and, and shakes in, uh, in, symp in sympathetic kind of pain with our brothers and sisters. So, of course, uh, the, the Uyghurs are facing, our well, Muslim brothers and sisters, they're facing uh, horrendous persecution, uh, virtual genocide in uh, East Turkestan. And, of course, we, we will have to do our bit uh, to basically show that uh, we, we won't let this stand without some kind of uh, word or action or deed against this. I say that this protest is, is it demonstrates that, that Muslims um, care about this, this matter and that we're not just being apathetic towards our brothers and sisters. It's not the, it's not the, 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 the complete solution. Um, it, it's part of a solution that maybe should hopefully work in tandem with all the work that we, we're doing in the Muslim world, if the Muslims were to be united, if we reconstituted uh, the, the Khilafah system, which was there since the time of the Prophet Muhammad uh, until 1924, 22, uh, we would have a means to defend ourselves, organized around leader, organized around combining our resources, to do many actions uh, to, 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 to show China that we Muslims will not be uh, persecuted without response. Right? So whether it's blockade, economic activities, political pressure, or, or something else that a Khalifa could organize, um, if we don't have such unity, which the Quran obliges us to have, then we're going to continue to face this, and, if, 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 and even escalating persecutions against Muslims, which we've seen over the many decades. The problem is in the Muslim world that they are divided and into small states. And so they justify their continued cooperation with China by saying that they're too small to do anything against China because they're one individual state. But when you tell them, well, why not uh, unite your resources, right? Why not unite the Muslim lands? Then you could do something. Uh, they say, well, that's a pipe dream. But it's not a pipe dream. What makes it a pipe dream is people think it's a pipe dream. Right? If you have political will, this makes things possible. Right? Certainly with modern technology, Considering that in the 8th, 9th centuries, Lisbon in Portugal was part of the same land as Lahore in Pakistan, modern day Pakistan. One land using horses and boats and camels as a means of transportation. How much more easy and feasible is it now for us to follow the obligation in the Quran to not be divided amongst ourselves? So if, we, if the Muslim rulers really wanted to do something about it, they would form some kind of con council or congress or what have you, either select a Khalifa or even if that, if that is even not, not something they want to do, they would still at least form a united response. It's easy to do so. Yeah? China depends on the Belt and Road Initiative, which goes through Muslim lands. You can cut that off. Cut off the Malacca Strait. Malaysia and Indonesia can do that, where roughly 80% of China's um, exports to the West go through. Easy to, to cut that off. Yeah, in, and protest. Even just threatening China with that by these states would be sufficient for China to reconsider. Right? But they don't do anything, and that's the problem. The thing is, this, whatever weapons that China and America have, nothing beats ideas. Right? Ideas, as they say, are bulletproof, and they can't stop ideas. If the Muslim world was to revive, if it was to rediscover Islam, uh, elevate its level of thinking, Instead of thinking about re-establishing a Khilafah as uh, finding the right leader, but rather finding the right system, the leader takes care of itself. Look in the West, it doesn't matter how incompetent their leaders are, their presidents or prime ministers are, the system always continues to function relatively efficiently. Because it's a shallow man thinks about individuals, but the enlightened man thinks about systems and rules. And if people follow systems and rules, and if Muslims rediscover the system of Islam, and how we could solve our problems, then the revival would happen virtually overnight, so to speak. So what we need is people to get involved in reviving the rediscovery of Islam and thinking about its practical implementation with due seriousness and sophistication. I say that don't stop at just attending protests or changing your your social media uh, pictures to, uh, to uh, the, the, the Uyghur symbols or what have you, but rather deal with the, the, com the complete solution, which requires us to revive the Muslim world, work to change the Muslim world, 
to bring about that unity, to combine our resources, because truly only from a united bloc can we deliver real solutions and not have to endlessly go to protests over many decades. I've been to so many demonstrations on various things, on, on the Rohingyas, on uh, Kashmiris, on Palestinians. Um, the, the list goes on and on and on, all the way from the 90s when it was the, the Bosnian Muslims. Right? So this thing is continuing, it's only escalating now. If Muslims don't realize that we have a solution within our deen, and our deen is the solution, and to research it and see how do we live by it, how do we apply it, how do we establish this system, and how do we revive our thinking, then this will continue, this, these, these uh, outrages and persecutions of Muslims will continue. So don't stop at a demonstration. Demonstration is good, but we need to be serious about working for revival in the Muslim world, otherwise we're just wasting our energies.